Hello, my bitches. How are we doing today? Good. Good, 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 good. Yes. So today, we are going to be doing a quick review on Hank, The Life of Charles Bukowski. And honestly, I'm glad that I probably won't be doing any more videos on this book ever. Um, so much to say about this book, and a lot of it has been said before. Again, if you know about Bukowski in any way, like if you have read his short stories, if you have read his novels, if you have read his poetry, like 85% of this book may seem like you've read this book before. Like, you'll be reading stuff and be like, what the fuck? And, um, like, deja vu kind of shit. And, you know, whatever. It is what it is. Um, because I'm assuming that this book was put together, like, a little bit for people who knew about Bukowski. And again, this is pre-internet, so who knows what the fuck people know. At times, it reads like a book written for people who've never read Bukowski and are just curious about who is this weird figure that, um, like, suddenly was able to make a movie. Because this project was put together pretty soon after the release of Barfly. So, like, I don't know. So... His name was in the public consciousness, I guess. So, whatever. The chapter on the Mimeo Revolution, awesome. Like, I would read this book just for that. There is a revised edition of this book that came out after Bukowski's death, which I think if you're going to pick this up, that would probably be the better book because I'm going to assume that Neely did extra shit. But there's just like weird little inaccuracies. Okay. So, like, and they're like on the same page. Like, there's this part where um, he's talking about how um, Barbe Schroeder, who directed Barfly, was hounding. Hank to get him to want to make a movie with him. Neely says, um, Hank really had a bad taste in his mouth from Hollywood because of the 1983 um, movie Tales of Ordinary Madness that was about like a bunch of short stories of Bukowski's that were like put into a thing. Um, and so they talk about that. And then the next paragraph is like, and then finally, in 1979, Hank signed the contract with Schroeder to do the movie. And you're like, well, if he didn't sign the contract originally because he didn't like what happened in 1983, how then can he jump in a time machine and go sign a contract in 1979? Just little fucking things like that that you're like... How the fuck did this get by anybody? Like, I don't understand. Like, that's fucking weird. So there's that. And then the last chapter of the book is, as he puts it, a memoir about Neely getting back in touch with Bukowski and kind of rekindling their friendship and then deciding to do this book. And it's weird because, like, he doesn't really pull any punches. Like, Bukowski treated Neely kind of shitty to his face. And Neely would take it and then say something about it, tangentially or whatever. And Hank would, like, kind of, like, feel bad about it kind of thing. And like, kind of change the subject or whatever. So, that whole aspect of it is nice that he didn't try to sugarcoat anything. 
Um, some of the stuff about Schroeder in here was actually really interesting. Like, um, Hank would call him up and start cussing him out, telling, saying, like, you're ripping me off, fucker, or you're trying to fuck my woman, and da -da -da -da, and would just say all this shit, and he would be drunk. And then Barbet would say, like, um, okay, I'm going to come over there and burn your house down. And then Hank would go, oh, come on, baby, everything's fine. We're just fooling here. Everything's cool. I'm going to hang up the phone now. And, like, he would fucking call his bluff and be crazier. And if you've read Hollywood, um, Bukowski's book about the making of Barfly, you'll know that Schroeder is way fucking more nuts than fucking Bukowski was. Like, just absolutely batshit crazy. Um, so little things like that were cool. And then one thing that was really interesting, I was reading this and loving and hating Charles Bukowski at the same time trying to finish both of them. And it's so funny because they, when I started reading both of them again, they both in the timeline were in the exact same place. And um, I can't remember what actual story it was, but it was about a fight Bukowski had um, with Linda King. And um, I like just read about it in there, and then I just read about it in here from like a different perspective. So that was kind of, that was fun. That was cool. Um, that's going to fall. So anyway, only if you are an absolute completist and purist would I say pick up that book. Or if you've never read Bukowski and you're interested in him a little bit, but don't want to fucking like actually read the words that he writes, that would be cool. But again, don't get this version. Get the newer version it has a different cover. So if you see it with this cover, don't get this one. Get the one with the other cover. Because um, I'm sure there's more shit in there and a little more um, info and stuff like that. So anyway, so that was this video. And now this video is done. So before I go, run out and get Los Angeles. My chapbook of amazing poetry of the little slice of heaven I live in out here, um, full of junkies and hookers and the unhoused and stuff like that. Fun stuff. Um, it's at my Etsy shop, and I guess that's it. So type hard, everybody, and I will see you guys later. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon, I appreciate the hell out of you guys, and thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew or the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.